Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-11. Our last episode featured the group being surprised by giant frogs and some bonkers in the sewers below the city of Phoenix. They have managed to get through a good portion of the tunnels without suffering major injury. We rejoin the party as they make their way through the smelly channel of sewage in search of the missing dog. Just when you thought you were used to it, another smell gets you, stated a nauseated Sister Elaine holding her nose. What is that odor? The group looked around and Cabe Silvertongue, the bard, located the source. Holding his nose, he kicked a carcass into the flowing center of the tunnel, carrying the corpse downstream. It appears it was a cat from the looks of it. The torch held by Fargus Stoutheart began to crackle and sputter, and the ranger requested another torch from the bard. Using one to light the other, the torchlight illuminated the passage sufficiently, finding a variety of debris that had washed up out of the indentation in the center of the tunnel. Room up ahead, he stated to the others, following behind him. Looks large, too. The other members began to notice a pale moss growing along the sides of the brick tunnel, and quickly discovered why. The chamber, ahead of the group, was extremely large and had several trenches leading into it. A large pool of standing water had encompassed most of the room, and the fetid water would echo drops of water from above as the moisture fell from the cracked ceiling. The sides of the cavernous room were covered in bleached tendrils that had found a home in the chamber. The group studied the room and noticed no movement and the stench was lessened due to the free-flowing water in this room. Well, B. O'Toole, the rogue, spied a single exit on the far side and pointed it out to the group. As the others surveyed the chamber, Lady Irena swished her robe about, attempting to clear off bits of debris from her mage's garb. I, for one, do not want to trek through that moisture. My boots are damp enough, and I'll never be able to wash the stench from my clothing as is. The others nodded, and Fargus thought for a moment. Pointing out that the room seemed empty, he decided that it would take the long way around to be safe. A small ridge circled the chamber, giving the group a slight respite from wading through the sewer waters. As they arrived at the far side of the room, they noticed a substantial amount of bleached foliage covered the wall. Why is this stuff white? inquired the halfling rogue, which garnered a flora lesson from the ranger. After the explanation, O'Toole's curiosity seemed satiated, and the group continued on. We'll have to go one by one as this ridge is narrower in this section. The group moved single file with their backs against the padded moss. The ranger warned the others that it was a bit slick and to use caution. With the human leading the way, the halfling was next, followed by Sister Elaine the Cleric. As the three shuffled along the narrow pass, Cabe offered his hand to assist the full-blooded elf at ease of access to the ledge. Reluctantly, she took her hand and began to apologize for her words from the previous day. I'm, I'm so sorry that I called you a half-breed the other day. I was wrong, and I was too quick to judge. The shadows in the room changed, and Cabe's slight smile changed quickly as he shoved the mage backward into the water, causing her to yell out. As she landed, she began to curse him when it became obvious what had occurred. The bleached tendrils covering the walls had animated and covered the first three members of the group. As Fargus struggled against the vines, he maintained a grip on the torch, but waved it around, causing the light to bobble. Welby was already completely encased in the vines, and the upper body of Sister Elaine the Cleric was also entangled. As Cabe drew his two short swords, he was hacking the vines that had come after him and Araina, the now-soaked mage. The anger that had covered her face from the push 
changed to a look of fear as she watched her new associates struggle for their lives. Quickly analyzing the situation, she felt that the bard was in good shape and focused on the cleric and the rogue. Clearing her mind, she came up with a spell she thought would be useful and cast it. Throwing both hands out and cocking them slightly, a ray of frost extended from her fingertips and struck the wall of moss above the heads of both Sister Elaine and the shorter Welby O'Toole, causing the aggressive vegetation to turn light blue and fro freezing. The pair of adventurers struggled against the icy grip and Fargus regained his faculties and smashed the lit torch between his legs, igniting the vine growth, causing it to retract quickly upwards. As Cabe finished off slicing several thick growths, that section retracted upwards as well. Fargus punched the frozen vines above the halfling's head, scattering chunks of ice into the water. Sister Elaine used her own strength and was also able to smash out of her frozen prison. Lady Irena now sat soaked in the sewer water and tried to regain her composure until she realized that she was completely soaked. A hand found its way in front of her face and a grib cave silver tongue was its owner. He apologized for pushing her, but she brushed it off with words stating that she was grateful at the assistance, albeit the words may have sufficed. Fargus had moved on and found the next exit clear of aggressive plant life. The soaked mage and bard waded through the waters, catching up with the other three quickly. So much for not getting any more wet, remarked the cleric to Irena. What were those things? asked the diminutive member of the party. Fargus spoke up, pointing out that it was probably vine blight, although he went on to explain that he had seen it in the wilderness, but it usually had a bluish-green hue to the vines. Sister Elaine pointed out that the lack of sunlight caused the bleaching and hence not easily recognizable. The ranger shook his head and pointed out that he still should have known. Cabe began to chuckle, causing the others to look at him. He abruptly cut short his merriment and apologized, stating, we're only looking for a stupid dog. Lady Irena, still wringing out her robe's edges, pointed out that she wasn't sure if the headaches were worth the five gold crowns. A silence fell over the group, and they began to discuss their options on continuing forward or going back. After a short discussion, the mage pointed out that she was already wet and tired, and that they deserved to get something out of this foray. Nodding, the group examined the opening leading out to the chamber, and then took their positions again. The exit tunnel had a deeper trench, which allowed the ridge on both sides to stay dry. A short distance later, they found themselves in another large room filled with water. Is it me, or are these rooms getting larger? quipped Sister Elaine. The group stated they agreed and started forward, but Lady Irena called for them to stop. Cabe, did you see that? And the bard replied that he did. Fargus, Welby, and Sister Elaine questioned the pair. The mage explained that with her elven dark vision, she is allowed to see heat. There is something very large below the water line, she pointed out. The group turned and observed ripples coming towards them from the center of the water. Whatever it is, it's coming to meet us, said Cabe. Fargus found a crack in the wall and stuffed the torch into it, freeing up his hands for the pending fight. Soft words behind them came from Sister Elaine. As she finished up, the group felt bolstered and quickly realized the incantation was a protection spell from her deity. The group spread out along the ledge and prepared to meet their adversary. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.